Three. Made little sense to a viewer as close as Magnus. Six tiles comprised to the hero's nose, which only took on a convincing curvature with some distance and a fair amount of latitude on the behalf of the observer, biting a curse sufficient to have him expelled from seminary. Magnus circumnavigated his pond and made his way down the aisle, inhabiting for a moment the scoured footsteps of countless processions of now dead priests. The knock was repeated, three sharp cracks made with a heavy object. Magnus conjured the image of the leaden pommel of a sword until he remembered the hammer cast in bronze that was fixed to the left hand door. The boy straightened his shoulders before he drew back the heavy bolt. A wet cloak knocked him to the cold floor. The body rolled off him and lay still as the storm beat its way into the temple. Magnus struggled to his feet and put all his weight against the door. By the time he had forced the bolt into place, the man had dragged himself to one of the huge pillars and was leaning against its massive carved base. He was a tall man with all detail of form muffled by, by the sodden cloak, perhaps more than one, which he wore like a shroud. His breathing was heavy and Magnus could see the man was not well. Both of his hands grasped his stomach as if he had eaten very poorly and in a second pond made on the floor of the temple that night, Magnus saw curling forms of blood. The man spoke with obvious difficulty, his voice fine wine in a rough wooden mark. Caselin, the name of the Arch-Lector. Arch-Lector Caselin sleeps, as do all priests. Might I find you a court in which you could rest until they awaken? Magnus was a good student, and his lessons served him well on this occasion. The man straightened himself a little, and a flash of pain stained his features. I doubt, a nobleman's voice. Magnus was sure now. I will see the dawn. The boy could not deny that, from the size of the stream of blood, which was noising its way to a drain beneath the water, the man was unlikely to wake from sleep. Perhaps Magnus took a step forward, so the man could hear him without straining. I might wake one of the other priests to give you an audience. The expression might have been a smile. My last words, the confession of the sins of my life, are fit only for the ears of the arch lector. Magnus searched for a textbook, reply but was interrupted. Perhaps it might help you, boy, if I told you who I was. You've heard, I presume, of Hadrian Somerasi. The guarded but blank stare by way of reply convinced the man that he had not. The man sighed and a little flag of blood from the corner of his lip. The taste was enough to carve an expression from the hard muscles of the man's face. He continued, the names coming out with the measured curiosity of a man more used to hearing them than speaking them. The teething wasp, the thousand faces from Margarita, the coffin builder. There are other names. Ah, recognition. You are he. I am, a pause, and I wish before I go kicking and screaming into more splashed company to purify my soul of the stains which are upon it. Can you be sure any lesser priest is so enamored of your God that he can grant me that absolution? And boy, are you the one to deny the arch lector the greatest confession your cult has taken in his lifetime? There is a certain dignity lent to a man, even a dying man, who asked questions which cannot be answered. Magnus walked quickly from the navel of the chapel and followed the route which he knew well but seldom traversed. One must pause for thought to find resolve for action before waking the archlector of the Temple of Sigma and Nam. Magnus waited for several long moments with his small face coked before the door the distance it had to cross was hardly the length of his forearm, but any distance crossed for the first time is a journey in darkness. Magnus had to knock twice before a voice came from inside. Your Holiness, a man is here. The reply was predictably scathing, and Magnus waited politely 
for it to play itself out. Your worship, it is a man of great import who asks for you by name. Even now, his hot blood spills on the temple floor, over poetic perhaps. But Kaislin had a penchant for that kind of language in his sermons, and Magnus took a gamble. The next response would decide the issue. Who is this man? Victory of a kind.